Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me in the scriptures that we are going to be looking at and considering today. <laughs> uh oh, he's got two sets of scriptures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, brother, um, you're going to find when the body of Christ, the brethren, have it kind of this thing where it's like, okay, you know, Brad, he usually does videos on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Sometimes that differs, but in a general thing. Um, the, yeah, uh, but you know, for example, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I couldn't resist that, excuse me. And um, I woke up and got into prayer and got into the reading of Scripture, devotional time with our Father, and um, read the proverb for today. Read the proverb for today, yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm sitting here, you know, I, Musing, it's like, you know, there's that, I've got nothing to talk about today. And then, just like that, in devotional time with the Lord, the Lord kind of showed me something, a little something, something today. And you're going to find, brother, um, that's how that works. See, sometimes we, when, for those of us who the Lord had puts into a position such as this, we, we will have like the next, like the previous day, we'll get the notes together and then we'll have it all together and, and you and the Lord will orchestrate it and then the next day comes and it gets flipped. It's like, I don't want you to talk about that. <laughs> and guides you on to, you'll be reading scripture and guides you into something. Well, what about this? I'm like, never mind. That has happened quite a few times uh, with your servant personally. Uh, but today, you know, like, I, what, what, is there something you want to talk about, Lord? <laughs> and the answer to that question was yes. Yes. We are going to be reading Ezekiel. Chapter 29, verses 1 on to verse 7, and we're going to have some expository on this. And this is very neat because it serves as a warning to you Christians, to you vile rank heretics out there. Okay? Let me, let me give you an example by uh, an illustration. And incidentally, our dear brother Alexander B. Hartley gave a beautiful gem of a video, a three-minute video about oldest and best, and he used sponge, beautiful video. If you have not seen that, it's three minutes of your time, watch it, okay? Our Father has given our dear brother Alexander B. Hartley that gift, in order, uh, that gift where he can take something from Scripture and put it to a real-life circumstance or something in order to convey it. Uh, that that is a that is a true gift, um, a spiritual gift that our dear brother has from our father. I can't do that, you know. You and I will sit here and go like you know meticulously, but that specific gift our father hath given unto our brother, to where he is able to articulate through experience and through um, good analogy. He's really good with that uh, to convey truth. Um, the, the video will be in the description box, and I'm also going to put it in the community section. Three minutes of your time. Watch it. Watch it. But see, you, you heretics out there, all you heretics, whoever you are, you, you Christians, you know, you free gracers, you Calvinists, uh, you Pentecostals, a lot of you Baptists, you uh, Presbyterians, Mes, uh, Mes, Mesodiths, or whatever. Yeah, they are Mes. Okay. The divided body, which is called Christianity. When you look at Christianity, Christ is divided. But the scripture says otherwise. Hmm. Hmm. 
The word gospel is generally equated, and I was going to send this out in an email, but it's like, no, I'm going to address it here. So, uh, brother, you know, brother, you, my dear sweet brother, all of you, brethren, sisters, chew on this. It is basically accepted that gospel equates to good news, right? Right? Now, this may be a video this week. We don't know. That's up to the Lord. I'm, I'm not the boss here. Okay? <laughs> but, where do we, how would we go about to show that scripturally, right? Like I said, um, that might be a video this week. But it is generally equated, generally, even with Christians, that gospel is good news. And what is the good news? The gospel. Where do you define what the good news, gospel, equates to for us today? That Christ Jesus died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And of course, that's not, there's more to it, of course, but that is a very good starting point. That's, of course... 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 on to verse 4. And I have been made aware of an absolute pond scum imbecile. Of course, a free gracer uh, refuting that. Okay? And why? What do they say? Well, there's no blood. That, that you can equate to like, well, John uh, never says the word repentance or whatever. Or whatever it was. Whatever their ridiculous argument is. It's like, okay, but it's throughout the rest of the scripture, right? Or another one, uh, Paul never said being born again. You're right. He never did. He just defined it. Okay, that, that's the petty idiocy of these devils. But, you know, good news. The good news. Christ is the propitiation for our sins. He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture on the cross and shed his blood for us because of what I did. That's good news. That's good news. That really is. Okay, that really is. Okay? You gotta watch out for some of these idiots, man. You really do. You really, really do. Okay? You really do. All right? <laughs> All right and like I said, that, that is a good place to start. There is, of course, more than just 1 Corinthians 15, 1 on verse 4. Okay, of course, you go to other places, okay? The gospel is not believe and receive. That is not the gospel. Because when it comes to that question, what are you believing? For the free gracer, what, what are you believing? In the death, burial, and resurrection, you may say, okay. But what is that? Hmm? What is that? The actual event? Or what is the object of your faith? Ah! See, the antinomianists, the object of their faith is their faith. They will say to you, they will say, because that's what they have to do in order to put on the facade. They will say to you, well, it's the death, burial, and resurrection. But you listen to these twits talk, it's faith, 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 faith alone, faith alone, right? The object of their faith is their faith. Okay? Who are they believing on? Lord Jesus Christ! Which one? They are talking about the, and I really want to get all vulgar with this, but I can't do that. They are claiming to believe on uh, one God who is comprised of three persons and they claim to believe on the one in the middle. One God and three persons. They're Trinitarians. That's not the true God. That's not the real God. So they believe on a false Christ to begin with. The Trinity is not who God is, dear brother. Okay? And why? Why are you believing. Why? What accrues to us, that encompasses it, yes. 
But is it because he is the greater and we are the lesser? Are you believing on him because of what you did to him and why he did what he did for the saint? Or is it just because it will accrue to you in the long run, it's better for you? And obviously it is, okay? Hence, fear over love. In order to love the Lord, you have to fear him. Okay, we've talked about that. That's just a rundown. The what, who, and why, okay? The what, who, and why Christianity flips on its head and gives you something perverse. Okay? And it is on to you devils, all of you, that this warning goes about. You're preaching another gospel and another Jesus. So, it is incumbent upon me to refresh you devils of your ultimate end. Because the end justifies the means. <laughs> right? Devil, right? Right? Sweetie pie? Huh? So, Ezekiel 29, verses 1 on to verse 2. In the tenth year, in the tenth month, in the twelfth day of the month, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Read along with me. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. You need to read along with me because I make mistakes. Okay? So read along with me. Verse 2. Son of man, set thy face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and against all Egypt. Now, instruction in righteousness. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, is can be likened for us today for our instruction in righteousness as the little G God of this world, Satan, Lucifer. Egypt can be likened for us today as instruction in righteousness as a picture of the modern world. Okay? And interestingly enough, what comes before 29? And Ezekiel 28 is giving us a clear picture of Satan. Okay? So, son of man, set thy face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and against all Egypt. John, now we got, got just a couple one verses here. John 7, verse 7. The world cannot hate you, Christian. Easy to believe us. Catholic, even though people do hate. I hate Catholicism. Oh, I, I do. I do. But the world cannot hate you. But me it hateth, because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. Yes. See, Christianity gives you another Jesus. And the Jesus who is, dear friend, takes his little finger and puts it on that one thing you lack. That's why you Christians don't like him. That's why you Christians don't like the Christ who is of the authorized version of the scriptures. That's why you don't like him. Because he goes right for the juggler. He don't mess around. Okay? He don't mess around. He's not going to justify your petty little sins gonna do it okay he ain't gonna do it that's why you guys hate him John 15 John 15 verses 18 on the 23 if the world hate you ye know that it hated me before it hated you you know Paul they beat the snot out of Paul they whipped him they did all kind they threw rocks at him uh, knocked him, didn't batty for a bit, and, you know, uh, died or whatever for a moment, whatever. But uh, Paul, uh, the world, religiosity, religion, beat the snot out of Paul. Why? 
because of who was in him. Okay? Paul might have had an attitude every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, sure, okay. But ultimately, unto the saint, the reason why the world hates you. Grant, now, hey, let's be realistic. The way we conduct ourselves can have, let's be honest, can have <laughs> a little bit of a deciding factor there to it. Yes, absolutely. Let's be realistic here. But ultimately, as a saint, the reason why you are hated, like I said, there you can add to that, but <laughs> because of who you, you know, your attitude or whatnot. But generally speaking, the reason why the world hates you is because if ye were, uh, if the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you, and we are sealed with the Lord. The Father dwells within us, and uh, and of course, who is our Father? The Lord Jesus Christ. That's fair, okay? So the world hates the Christ who is, the Jesus who is, okay? And he lives inside of us saints. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. Hmm. <laughs> well, we can go off for hours about what the world goes. Uh, where's my pen? Where, where'd my pen go? <laughs> I need to write that down. <laughs> this love, yeah, good <laughs> love, this love, yeah, okay, yeah, we can talk for hours about this love, especially the love of Christianity, which is not love at all, it's hate, okay, if you were of the world, the world would love his own, but because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. And this is not to be tied in with the heretical satanic doctrine of Calvinism with elect and non-elect. No, and remember John 15 also, also it is before the death, burial, and resurrection. You know, the good news, the propitiation that Christ died for us. Okay, that, that's good news. Okay, anyway, anyway, remember the word that I said unto you, and you, you Christians need to remember this. We saints need to remember this. Remember the word that I sent unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. See, that, that's why I hate free grace. Number one, it's not the grace that is offered by God. Number two, you cannot find free grace in Scripture. Okay? And number three, it exalts self. You save yourself by your own belief. The object of their faith is their faith. The object of the faith for the Catholic is what? A cookie. Francis. <coughs> okay? All right? See... In religion, in Christianity, the object of their faith is everything but the Jesus Christ who is of Scripture. Okay? You talk with any of them, you know what I'm talking about. Of course the saints know that. Okay? Of course the saints know that. All right? But the servant is not greater than his Lord. See... To strip down, simplify what the grace of God is. The greater bestowing upon the lesser. Unmerited favor. Okay? But when you, you know, have the cookie, you drink the wine. Or you call down Christ from above at your back. <laughs> and you do it. See, to the free gracer, they are the greater, and God is the lesser. To the Catholic, your cookie is the greater. God is the lesser to you. That's what Christianity is. Okay? Every single denomination of the divided body of Christianity, including your little King and Bible even Christianity, okay? Its premise is that. You belong to a 
country club. You belong to a clique or a sect, okay? But one devised of man. Because, hey, right? Hey, hey, lost guys, atheist, right? Christianity is divided. But the scripture says, is Christ divided? <laughs> well, if you look at Christianity, that, that's all. Big time, yes. Anyway, verse 21, okay? <laughs> verse 21. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Verse 22. If I had not come and spoken unto them, That, see, right there. They had not, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also, because Jesus is the father. <laughs> but that, that, that verse 22, I know I said 21, I wrote down 21, but we were supposed to read verse 23. Uh, 23. See, that's why also, too, brethren, when you run into these heretics, and especially those who are deceived by the heretics, they stop their ears. You ever wonder? You know, they stop their ears and they gnash on you with their teeth. The minute they are made aware of the truth of what they are doing is contrary to Scripture and sin. I didn't know! Yeah, you do. See, there ain't one innocent person in hell. And there will never be one innocent person in hell. But you, you know what the contrast is to that is? There are sure, surely, a whole bunch of guilty people up in heaven. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Isn't that, what, what's the word, a paradox of sorts? In hell. They ain't one innocent person, one innocent anything in hell. Not one. But yet in heaven, heaven is filled with guilty people. I, I know that our guilt is washed away in the blood in Christ. I get that. But when, when you think about it, when you think about it in that shoe, kind of interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's why they do this. It's like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Why? Why? Because the law is knowledge of sin. I have not known the uh, thou shalt not covet unless the law said thou shalt not covet. So when a saint comes around and, uh, you know, boop, pops your little uh, religiosity bubble, Christian. You know. You don't, you, you, you gnash, I don't want to hear it, eh, because you want to live in your deception. And that's why you follow these, these idiots who are able to get away with what they get away with because you don't want to hear it. Ain't that nothing? First John 2, 15 on the verse 17. First John 2, 15 on the 17. Love not the world. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I don't love the world, but yes, you do everything in your power, Christian, to grasp, to hold, to ingratiate onto you everything of the world. But yet, you don't love the world. But yet, it's the focal point of everything that you do. Hmm. You shall know them by their fruits. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, you know, the sagging sin suit, it begins with that. You know? Hey, come to the, the phallus house and, you know, have fellowship, have a donut, have coffee. Able to talk about your stupid baseball games and stuff like that. Lust of the flesh and the lust 
of the eyes, the visual stimuli. We walk by faith, not by sight. Oh, what a glorious sight to behold, the Roman Catholic Church. <laughs> the, uh, the magnificent, and okay, they are. The magnificent structures built by man and all the marble and the tapestries and the paintings and the coverings of Egypt and all that stuff. It, it, it looks pretty. It looks pretty. Yeah, sure. But why did sepulchers full of dead men's bones? Mm -hmm. And the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The pride of life. I've had the cookie. I've had the cookie. I had the wine. I had a good confession. I've done contrition. I donate over 10% of my whatever to the church. And then that idiot, that heretic Sam Spitz said, uh, you give 10% 10, 10 is required. After that is when you're really giving. And anyone should know that tithing is not a requirement for today. It should have been that guy. But then again, he's a church phallus building guy Christian anyway. Okay? Yeah. I just believed the pride of life. I just believed. And the pride of life comes out in those idiots all the time. The cat, the Calvinist, okay? Black Hebrew Israelitism is a veiled form of that elect and non-elect Calvinistic doctrine. It is. Because they say they are elect because of the color of their skin. I use that one as an example uh, because that, that, they, 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 they rub it in your face. They really do. And they say they call others racist when they're the ones who are brazenly in your face. They're God's people merely because of their skin color. That's bad. And see, that's the pride of life. The pride of life. I get to boast myself because I had a cookie. I get to boast myself because I am like God. I save myself by a thought. I get to boast myself as being somebody because of the color of my skin. And that works both ways, guys. Okay? <laughs> I've talked to white supremacists before, too, through email. Disgusting. Disgusting. When you're basing your, your religion as the focal point, the starting point of is the color of your skin, you, 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 um, you, don't, have, you don't have the right God at all. And it's funny about the uh, white supremacists, too. Um, they go off about the Hebraic Jews. They, they truly do hate the Hebraic Jews. And it's like, uh, idiot! Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, is it not evident that our Lord sprang from Judah? Woohoo! <laughs> and then you run into the, well, Jesus was a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, effeminate Caucasian. <laughs> Very similar to the black Hebrew Israelites, uh, when you get to that part in the conversation with these guys who are like got their heels dug in the dirt, there, there's, there's, there's no, no more conversing with them. They, they really are not. They're, they're really not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One believes that Jesus is a blonde-haired, blue-eyed guy, and the other believes that uh, Jesus is uh, black like a African from Nigeria or something like that, okay? Uh, no, 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 you're both crazy, okay? Okay, but see, the pride of life. How's the phrase go? Baptist bread, and when I'm dead, I'll be Baptist dead? The pride of life. 
and the world passeth away, and the less thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Hmm. Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2. Uh, Ezekiel 2. Uh, Ezekiel 29 verse 2 again. Son of man, set thy face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Instruction and in righteousness. Pharaoh, likened unto Satan, Egypt, likened unto the world. And prophesy against him and against all Egypt. Hmm. That's, what, uh, that's what we're doing. Uh, that's what we're doing. Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2, 1 and verse 3. And you hath he quickened, made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Past tense. Referring on to those who were lost and saved. Now saved. Okay? You know, that, that's when you read Ephesians chapter 1, 13, 14, okay? We're sealed, okay? Where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the lowercase s spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Ye shall be as gods. You are of your father the devil, okay? Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as others. By nature, children of wrath. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Lord. You're not saved. You're not regenerate. You, God's wrath is for you. Okay, that, that's very, very simple. I think even Jack Smack could figure that one out. You know, that guy's got rocks for brains. Okay, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on verse 5. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, ministry of reconciliation, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Ah, the way you behave, the way you serve your, your God reflects him. Again, with the foul mouth, uh, profane people. And the people who are justifying sin. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Again, scripture here, you know, you read scripture, you can discern who is saved and who is lost. In whom the God of this world, that be Lucifer, Satan. He even says so in Luke 4. And he's been given that as a means of judgment upon this world. Allowed by who? I'll give you 50 guesses and the first 49 don't count. Okay? In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the lights of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine on to them. Hmm. Should shine on to them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Hmm. And I, I skipped this, and I kind of messed it up, but it worked out fine. Ro uh, John chapter 3. The light, the light, and what is that? The light of the glorious gospel of Christ. The good news, okay, let's, let's go with it, that gospel is equated on the good news. The gospel of Christ. Hmm. The light of the gospel of Christ. Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. There's no blood in that. Uh, it's mentioned elsewhere, you idiots. See, these guys have this idea that it's a one and done thing. Scripture with scripture, moron, moronos, idiota. Scripture with Scripture. 
Okay? We have the complete canon. Okay? In the, in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Scripture upon scripture upon scripture. Okay? You don't just stop at one stop. There are many stops along the way. Okay? See, that shows you something. The laziness that is this thing called Christianity. They want a one shot and done. Scripture was scripture. Okay? Scripture was scripture. That's why when you see these salvation videos that are like three minutes long or 11 minutes long, okay? It, 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 no, it doesn't work. Okay? It doesn't work like that. All right? All right? I mean, to explain, you can't relegate it just to a mere 3 or 11 minutes. Okay? There's so much more to it. It's simple. It is simple. The hard part is, of course, getting over you. But the light of the glorious gospel of Christ... John 3, 19 on the 21. Yeah, see, uh, I misread uh, 21 here when we read uh, John 15, 18 on to uh, 23. Okay, I, I misread that. Anyway, anyway, John 3, 18 on the 21. Or 19 on the 21. And this is the condemnation. That light is come into the world. Men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting, huh? Very interesting. Ezekiel 29 Verse 3. Speak and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers, which hath said, My river is mine own, and I have made it for myself. Oh. The great dragon, huh? Now, this one, for, for you saints, this one is a no-brainer. Okay, this one is a no-brainer for you saints. Revelation 12, Revelation 12, 9 and 10. And that great dragon was cast out. The great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers. Oh, gee. Hmm, I wonder who he's making a reference there. The, and the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And Revelation 17, verses 1 and 2. Okay, look at that verse, verse 3 again. Speak and say, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon, Satan, that lieth in the midst of his rivers. Revelation 17, 1 and 2. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. That, that's the great whore is Rome. Not America, Rome. Okay? With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Okay, that, that's pretty obvious. Uh, Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. 13 on to verse 14. Okay? 
Isaiah 14, 13 on to verse 14. Hmm. Speak and say thus, saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers, which has said, My river is mine own, and I have made it for myself. Isaiah 14, 13 and 14, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the most high. In John 8, John 8, 43 and 47, John 8, it's mine, it's mine, I made it for myself, I'm God. Woo! You Christian. Uh, John 8, 43 and 47. Hey, Christian, why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? You don't want to. You don't want to. And hey, you're the educated one. You've got the, you know, you've been through the Jesuit school system. And you can't understand the authorized version. No, you can. You just don't want to. Okay? <laughs> the oldest and best. What a beautiful video, brother. Ye are of your father the devil. And the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, from the Garden of Eden. And abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Because he is his own God. For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Oh, how many of you have, in, uh, have uh, uh, gone through that when witnessing to a Christian? What they're believing to see. <laughs> God loves you. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? Which of you convinceth me of sin? Now, I have not looked in the dictionary or looked up the word in Scripture, but see, I find that interesting, as I believe the Bible's uh, change convinceth to convicteth me of sin. I believe the Bible's put that there. But when you think about convinceth me, to convince somebody, okay? I might be off base a little on this, and I'll gladly take correction, but here in John 8, you know, <laughs> where was that? And many, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Verse 30 in John 8. Which of you convinceth me of sin? Think about that. The Pharisees, uh, in three verses, three times, tried to justify themselves to the Lord. And when they couldn't do that, they did what? Verse 48. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil. Convinceth me of sin. Trying to convince the Father that sin is okay? Trying to convince the Father that you're a saint, a saved individual, and you're not? Talk about deceiving and being deceived, huh? Like so many Christians, they think they're saved. They're trying to convince the Lord of what he already knows of them that they are not. Roll, roll that around in your head for a little while when it comes to that. Like I said, uh, the use of convinceth, I might be a little off, uh, off on this, I don't know, I'll take a correction. But when you put it in that shoe, okay, verse 30, and as he spake these words, many believed on him. And the Lord's like, hold on, whoa, spunky britches. Okay, hold up. And they justify themselves, justify themselves, justify themselves. Ye are of your father the devil. All right, you're the devil. 
Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? <laughs> because you're not of God. And you don't want to hear what God said. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Ouch! I hope that hurts you. I do. I, I hope that hurt. John, uh, Ezekiel 29, verse 4. But I will put hooks in thy jaws. Job 41. I will put hooks in thy jaws. All you devils. All you devils. This is a warning to you. You don't, you don't care. You know who you're serving. You're lost. But for those who are deceived by you. Job 41. But I will put hooks in thy jaws. Canest thou draw out Leviathan with an hook? Or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? Canest thou put an hook in, into his nose? Or bore his jaw through with a thorn? Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Skin for skin, yea. All that a man hath will he give for his life. But touch his bones and his flesh. He will curse thee to thy face. You know, Mark, uh, 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 Michael the archangel didn't durst bring a railing accusation against Satan. You think Satan's going to get a little uppity in tone, in tone with the Lord? Oh, yeah. Will he make a covenant with thee? Wilt thou take him for a servant forever? Wilt thou play with him as with a bird? Or wilt thou bind him for thy maidens? A lot of these Christians are playing around with Satan and they don't even know it. Play with them as a bird. I, I, I'm reminded of these idiots, uh, and I'm being polite when I say that, in this specific thing, about these ghost hunter guys who have seances <laughs> to try to get a light sage <laughs> and uh, do all this stupid nonsense. Satan casting out Satan. They're playing with, with devils as with Satan. They're playing with the devil as with the bird. Like, oh! <laughs> okay. Wilt thou play with him as with a bird? Or wilt thou bind him for thy maidens? Shall the companions, shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him among the merchants? Canst thou fill his skin with barbed irons? Or his head with fish spears? Lay thine hand upon him. Remember the battle and do no more. People out there think they can command the devil. I command you. De oh, Pentecostals are notorious for this. Well, Paul did in the name of Jesus Christ. And see, a lot of you don't believe on the true Jesus Christ anyway. Okay. Anyway, let's continue. Behold. The hope of him is in vain. Satan will not be redeemed. <laughs> Satan cannot be redeemed. Okay? That's impossible. Satan cannot be redeemed. Okay? Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? Cast down. And we're going to touch on this here in Ezekiel, the next verse uh, then when we look at verse 5 here, but there's going to be a time when everyone's going to actually behold the anointed cherub that covereth. And they're going to be cast down. Number one, he's going to be beautiful. Satan, Lucifer, son of the morning, the anointed cherub that covereth, his beauty, that's why sin looks so good to you, his beauty is going to be beyond compare. The only beauty that sh destroys the beauty of Satan is the one that the is the one whom the world says when we behold the, him there is no beauty that we should desire him. Of course I'm talking about Jesus Christ. 
the beauty of our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. This is like, there's no comparison. But see, for those of you who the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? None, and see right here, none is so fierce that dare stir him up. Michael the archangel didn't even bring a, I am he's an archangel, didn't even dare to bring a railing accusation against Satan. But what did he say? <laughs> the Lord rebuke thee. Who then is able to stand before me? You Christians, generally, have the wrong God. You have the wrong God. Your God, through Rome, has been fit into nice, arranged, little cubicles. And I know some of you kind of, uh, because of Pentecostalism, I understand that. But see... The Trinitarian thought does exactly that. And God is bigger than anything. Okay? So, verse 4 in Ezekiel 29. But I will put hooks in thy jaws, and I will cause the fish of thy rivers to stick onto thy scales. The fish of thy rivers. Those who have been deceived by the doctrine of devils, by the doctrine of Satan. And of course, Job 41, 15 on to 17. His scales are his pride. His armor that he puts on. His outer adornment. His scales are his pride. Shut up together as with a close seal. One is so near that no air, spirit, can come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together that they cannot be sundered. Verses uh, 33 and 34. This wasn't added in, but we got to. Upon earth there is none his like who is made without fear. No fear of the Lord. He beholdeth all, all, all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. The pride of life. You, you're a Catholic. Pride of life. You believe and receive. Pride of life. You're a black Hebrew Israelite, pride of life. You're Baptist bread and you'll be Baptist dead. You go to church every Sunday. You give more than 10% the pride of life. <laughs> but I will put hooks in thy jaws and I will cause the fish of thy rivers to stick unto thy scales. You Christians who are deceived by these guys, that's you. And I will bring thee up out of the midst of thy rivers. Bring thee up out of the midst of thy rivers. And all the fish of thy rivers shall stick unto thy scales. Oh, oh, First John 2. See how we did that? First John 2. Yeah, I think you know where we're going, brother. First John 2. 18 on the 19. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. I will bring thee up out of the midst of thy rivers. Bring thee up out of the midst of 
thy rivers, your rivers. Not the river of God. Your river. Your river. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yes, no? Hmm. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest. I will bring thee up out of the midst of thy rivers that they were not all of us and all the fish of thy river shall stick unto thy scales. First John 4, 5, and 6. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the lowercase s, spirit of truth, and the lowercase s, spirit of error. Verse 5 in Ezekiel 29. I will leave thee thrown into the wilderness. Thee and all the fish of thy rivers. Thou shalt fall upon the open fields. Ezekiel 28, 17 on the 19. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. All you people who are deceived, willfully deceived by Christianity and the, the denominational teachings of the, of the divided Christ of Christianity. Thou, okay. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the mist of thee. A fire from the mist of thee. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. It shall devour thee. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. These these especially these stupid free graces. They devour themselves. And you, Christian, who falls for these guys, I don't have any pity for you guys. I really don't. Okay? The, their doctrine, same with Catholicism. Same with Catholicism. I, I mean, I, do ha I don't hate the person who is deceived. I don't. But, you know, there comes, when there comes a point where you are willfully believing the error, I don't have pity for you. I don't. When you've heard the truth, you know, I don't want to hear it. You've heard the truth, and you want to continue in your error. It's really hard to have pity for someone who knowingly wants what is false in order that they may gratify their flesh. It's really, really difficult. It's difficult. We can, but it's difficult. Therefore will I bring a forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee. I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Talk about being made a spectacle thereof. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror. And never shalt thou be any more. The ultimate end of those of you who are deceived by Satan is to share in his, um, in his lovely um, <laughs> permanent vacation in the lake of fire. Isaiah 14. Just one verse. Isaiah 14. One verse. Verse 15. 
Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Oh, well, hell's not eternal. You're stupid. I'm, I'm not sorry. I'm not, I'm not sorry. Um, you want to reject the eternality of hell? You're stupid. You will find out the hard way, and by that time, it will be too late for you. You are, I'm, somebody got to tell it to you like that. You deny the eternality of hell, you're stupid. You are stupid. Okay? Link for that in the description box. All right? Revelation 21. See, <laughs> okay? All right? And I will leave thee thrown into the wilderness. Verse 5, Ezekiel 29. Thee and all the fish of thy rivers, thou shalt fall upon the fields. Thou shalt not be brought together nor gathered. I have given thee for meat to the beasts of the field and to the fowls of the heaven. All the fish, all you people who are willfully, willfully, willfully deceived by this. Not wanting, you stopping your ears and gnashing with your teeth. You don't want to be made aware because then you'll be accountable. Ezekiel, Ezekiel uh, Revelation 21, just one, one, uh, one verse, verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. It is appointed unto men once to die. And after this, the judgment. We're all going to die. Okay? And the second death is not talking about soul annihilationism. Okay? It's an eternal thing. We address that in the eternal eternality of hell video. Okay? But... You guys like to believe a lie? You're going, you're, your ultimate end is the lake of fire. Okay? And also, Revelation 22, just one verse, verse 15. <laughs> For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Loveth a lie. Got to go to Christ's church. Rome, right? Just believe and receive, right? Loveth a lie. You're, you're elect because of your skin color. Loveth a lie. Baptist bread and Baptist dead in the church building. You loveth a lie. Not all you Baptists, I get that. Okay? I, I, I understand. Okay? Mark 9. Mark 9. See, uh, brethren, brother, as part of this calling, we, we have to let not people forget where if they ain't saved, their ultimate end. And, they, and see, you, you all can deny, you know, well, I don't believe in hell. Well, good for you. And hey, one of the, what they say, all they can say is that you will. You'll, you'll remember that. In the panoramic, which I believe, when you stand before the Lord at the great white throne and to be cast off into the lake of fire, um, you, you will remember that. That you scoffed. Mark 9, 43 and 48. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. He's not talking about mutilation. What are your hands touching? I don't want to know. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Worm, I totally believe, is a reference onto the soul. See, that's the eternal thing about you. You have soul. Angels don't. Okay? Animals don't. 
We are made in the image of God. We have soul. Okay? We have a spirit and a soul. The spirit and soul, yes, are eternal. Yes, but it's the soul. Okay? And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. Where, where are your feet taking you? I don't want to know. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. Twice mentioned. Oh, oh well, I, well, I had that one too. Twice mentioned. Okay. Okay. That, that's pretty serious. Twice mentioned. Pay attention. Okay. And again, he's not talking about literal mutilation. And he, about the hand thing, he's not talking about oh, when you guys are deceived and take the mark of the beast that you can chop off your hand and no 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 no. Once you do that, you're you're done. You're you're going to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. And that's what these Christians are preparing you people for to take the mark of the beast after we, the body of Christ, are redeemed. Okay. Where their worm dieth not, verse forty six. And the fire is not quenched. Now, hold on. Twice mentioned, when the Lord says something, you know, twice, when it's twice mentioned, that means, like they say, Lord, Lord! Emphasis on, hey, hey, you know, important. Twice mentioned, that's significant. Video for that in the description box. But, okay? Verse 40, uh, 43, Into the fire that never shall be quenched. One. 44, and the fire is not quenched. 2, 45, into the fire that never shall be quenched. 3, you can be, you can be stupid and deny the eternality of hell or that your soul gets annihilated. You can be stupid. Um, you will be reminded of that for all eternity as you spend it screaming in eternal torment. And all because you love this more than God. Where their worm dieth not, verse 46, and the fire is not quenched. Okay, that's the fourth time about the unquenching fire. And that's twice about the worm not dying. Your soul. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. Again, not talking about literal. What? I shall set no wicked things before my own eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. What you putting before your eyes? I don't want to know. I really don't want to know. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee... To enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. <laughs> so, okay. Let's look at it. 43. Fire that, not, that shall not never be quenched. Into the fire that never shall be quenched. One. Okay? Their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Two. Okay? Verse 45. Into the fire that never shall be quenched. Three. Verse 46. Their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Four. <laughs> Verse 47. Okay? It doesn't mention about the fire that will be quenched, but it says hell fire. Verse 48. Where their worm dieth not, three, and the fire is not quenched. Five, the number of death. Three. The Lord is conveying to you the eternality of hell and also the eternality of the soul. Right there. But they're, they're, you know, and see, when you get into the wanting to debate, well, the eternality of the soul, I don't believe in the eternality of the soul. Why? Because, hey, 
If you don't believe in the eternality of the soul, then when you die, then that's it, right? Or you're going to go to hell, sure, and you'll just burn up for a little while, and that's it. Because God's merciful. No, 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 dude. No, dude. You, you, you're crazy. You're crazy, okay? Now, Ezekiel 29, verses 6 on to 7. And all the inhabitants of Egypt shall know that I am the Lord because they have been a staff of a reed unto the house of Israel. The world will know by the judgment that the Lord inflicts or allows to be afflict, afflicted upon the world. They'll know he is the Lord by his judgment. When they took hold of thee by the hand, thou didst break. All you who are trusting in Satan, you know, in Christianity, in Rome, in easy believism, in Pentecostalism, in Calvinism, and even some extreme forms of, uh, Bap uh, you know, Baptist faith or something like Ruckmanism or stuff like that, okay? When they took hold of thee by thy hand, thou didst break, and rend all their shoulder. And when, thou, when they leaned upon thee, thou breakest madest all their loins to be at a stand. Ah. Yeah. Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30. See, Jesus Christ, who is God, our Father, He is the living God. He is the true God. He won't break. Okay? He can take it. Satan and his devices will eventually fail you. Isaiah 30, 1 on the 3. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. Covering, but not of my spirit. Okay, that's there. You save yourself by your own belief, so that you can add sin to sin that walk to go down into Egypt, the world, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Satan, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt, the world. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. What you Christians are trusting in that comes from Satan. You will be ashamed of it. By the time that happens, it will be too late for you. And God is not the author of confusion. Satan, the world is. Isaiah 31, verses 1 to verse 5. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots. Visual stimuli. Because they are many. And in horsemen, because they are very strong. Well, if Christ had a church, it'd be the biggest one. <laughs> yeah, your Christ, not the Christ who is, okay? But they look not to the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Yet he is also wise. He, yet he also is wise. And will bring evil, and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers, and against the help of them that work iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men and not God. The world. Men of the world. Christians. And their horses flesh and not spirit. Lord K. says there. One that is imparted. Remember, doctrinally, this is under the law where it was faith and works. Okay? When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is open shall fall down, and they all shall fail together. For thus hath the Lord spoken unto me, like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey. <laughs> Hold, 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 your, hold, your, hold your place there. Hold your place there. You know where we're going, brother. 
Like the young lion, huh? Like, like! Did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see that? Hmm. Like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey. First Peter chapter 5, 6 on to 10. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty high end of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. As a roaring lion. As a roaring lion. As a roaring lion. Like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Perfect, having your senses exercised by reason of youth. Use, not youth, excuse me. Uh, perfect in heart. Not sinlessly perfect. Okay? Go back to Ezekiel chapter um, 29. Oh, no, no, where did we? Uh, Isaiah 31. Um, where were we? Verse 4. For thus hath the Lord spoken unto me, like as the, long, uh, like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey, when the multitude of shepherds is called forth against him, he will not be afraid of their voice, nor abase himself for the noise of them. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the hill thereof. Not be afraid of them. You know why? Jude. You know why? Jude. Jude 12 and 13. These are spots in your feasts of charity. Charity is self-sacrifice. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, Second death, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom the dark, for to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Come and strut and dance their stuff upon us on the stage to be heard of no more. It is the tale told of an idiot. Full of sound and fury. Signifying nothing. Signifying nothing. Verse 5 in Isaiah 31. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also he will deliver it. And passing over, he will preserve it. Why are you afraid of a man who's going to die? Isaiah 30 verses 5 on to verse 7 now. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be, nor be in help, nor profit, but a shame and also a reproach. Dad, come here, you, you Christians, and all your, in all your little precious denominations of the of the divided body of Christianity. One day. One day. You're going to be ashamed of a people that could not profit, nor help, nor profit, but a shame and also a reproach. One day, most for most of you, unfortunately, it will be by the time it is too late, but you will be ashamed of that thing that you ingratiate yourself to. The burden of the beasts of the south into the land of trouble and anguish, from whence come the young and old lion, the fire, the viper, and the fly, fiery 
flying serpent, all like Nehushtan on all the ambulances out there. They will carry their riches upon the shoulders of young asses and their treasures upon the bunches of camels to a people that shall not profit them. Yeah, giving all the money to the Vatican. For the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore have I cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still. Full of sound and fury. Signifying nothing. Psalm 37 and then we'll be done. Psalm 37. 32 and 40. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. They mark our steps. The Lord will not leave him in his hand or condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, not your own. And he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Look around, man. This is their hour in the power of darkness. The doctrines of devils are growing and getting larger and not stopping. This is their hour in the power of darkness. Yet, he passed away. And lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Ecclesiastes 9. <laughs> Verses 4 on to verse 6. For to him that is joined to all the living there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. You and I touched on that in conversation the other day, remember? Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now purged. Neither have they any more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Naked came we into this world, and naked we will return Thither or hither. The Lord gave. The Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Verse 37. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. Hey, <laughs> you wicked devil! Yeah, you wicked devil! <laughs> Yeah, the one's like, I'll, I'll remind you of Psalm 37, 37. Yeah, ignoring the context, which exposes you. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. That is going to be it for this little video. Dear brethren, thank you for watching this if you do. Like I said, I'm going to link that one video that uh, our father gave to our brother Alexander B. Hartley in the video as well. And um, uh, a few videos will be in the description box for you to uh, ponder and consider. Um, thank you. Please keep your servant in prayer. Please keep each other in prayer. Thank you for watching this if you do. I love you. And we will see you in the next video.